Howdy doody buckaroonies, a little while ago I made a video that made a couple pretty sensitive people pretty upset, using AI and generative tools to write a song. Naturally, today, we're here to do it all over again. This video is an experiment I have wanted to conduct for a very long time, and I'm extremely excited because the time is finally here. In today's video, we are going to let my computer and some AI tools write, mix, and master a song with as much of a hands-off approach as possible to put these AI tools to the test. I think we live in a particularly interesting time in the world of music technology because things have evolved to such a point where you no longer need a traditional recording studio to make a professional song. You can make a hit record on your laptop in the back of a bus thanks to the advances of really powerful DAWs and all the great plugins on the market. In the last couple of years as well, we've really started to see the rise of a lot of different tools for songwriters, musicians, and composers that help you to write chord progressions or generate melody ideas and remove some of the traditional barriers in needing to understand music theory and composition and just enable people to write better songs. Personally, I find this stuff fascinating and I think it's really awesome that there are so many tools out there anymore that help enable people to break through the barriers, whether it's not knowing how to write a chord progression or maybe not being the greatest mix or mastering engineer or whatever it might be, and get the ideas in their heads out into the real world. I think it's a really powerful thing to give someone the tools to facilitate the creative process and make music, because making music is awesome, and music is like one of the most awesome things ever. And I think it's equally awesome that these tools have actually become quite good. However, what I find particularly interesting is the idea of allowing AI to take the driver's seat fully and seeing what a computer can spit out. There are a lot of really cool tools out there like the Ava bot and some other AI tools that can write very convincing pieces of music. And as a matter of fact, the background music in this video was generated with AI. Now, before people go getting super triggered again, it's worth saying that I really have no expectations here. I simply want to try this because I'm curious to see what will happen. These tools are not meant to fully take the lead. That's the purpose of this video, and that's why I'm doing it. I want to see what would happen if we let them take the lead. These tools are meant as a suggestion in the creative process to give you a starting point or something to iterate from, because the true creativity and the true work is your human censorship and sensibilities as to what you keep and what you throw away, similar to how you might write a paper and go back and revise it in a couple of different drafts. Now, of course, there is always something to be said about the profoundly human process and experience of creating a work of art. But what I'm interested in is the works where that line begins to blur a bit because it really challenges our perception of things and it raises some big, deep, and very powerful questions about our typically anthropocentric view of our place in the universe as a creative identity, a life force, an ego, and all that, and that is super awesome. But philosophy stuff aside, let's make some music. Before we get into it, I wanted to give some quick shout outs because today's video was made possible by a couple of really awesome companies I got in touch with who hooked me up with their products in order to make this happen. First off, we've got Isotope who provided me with copies of their Neutron and Ozone software, which are really powerful, fully featured solutions for the mixing and mastering process, which also feature their assistant technology, which is an AI tool that helps you create mixes and masters for your tracks in a matter of only a few clicks. We'll also be taking a deeper look at these plugins on the channel in a future video. Next up, a big shout out to Captain Plugins who hooked me up with their Captain Plugins 5 Suite. Captain Plugins are makers of some award-winning plugins for music composition, which have some very powerful features that make music theory and songwriting much more accessible and link up together in some really cool ways. And finally, a shout out to Effabeat as well with their Melody Sauce plugin. Melody Sauce is a fast and easy tool for generating melody ideas and getting some inspiration for your track in a matter of seconds or generating a ton of different melody loops for sample packs, which is actually really useful for sound designers. So a huge thank you to all of these companies for hooking me up with their plugins to check Check this out. This is something I've really been looking forward to doing for quite some time. For more information on all these plugins or to check them out for yourself, you can find all of the links down in the description below. So first things first, we're going to need a chord progression and we're going to need a genre. Now, I don't know of any AI tools that pick a genre for you, so we're going to use ChordChord.com, which is a free AI chord progression generator to generate some chord progressions until we find one that we're really feeling. And then from there, I guess we'll decide on the genre of the track based on the vibe we get from that chord progression. In the settings here, I have this just to be fully random. So we're just gonna keep hitting generate here until we find something. So we just hit generate.
and keep doing that until we find something good. Okay, so here I've got a chord progression that I'm really digging. It sounds like this. The E major seven in there is particularly interesting. So this is in the key of G flat minor. Now, what we're gonna do since our song is obviously gonna have more than one section is we'll go into the settings here and lock this to be the same key of G flat minor. And then we'll generate maybe two more progressions just so we have some other ones to choose from to arrange our track. Okay, and I've got my other two progressions here. So the second one sounds like this. which is pretty cool. I think that fits and would be maybe like a nice bridge or something, or maybe the verse. And then the third progression sounds like this. So with that in mind, I think we're gonna base the song around the first progression that we generated, which was this one. And I guess from this, Mostly the E major seven here, that kind of gives me like liquid drum and bass vibes or like chill drum and bass vibes. I'm not sure if that's gonna work, but for the sake of time, we're just gonna roll with that. Now, getting the ball rolling here is gonna be pretty simple. Let's grab Captain Chords and drag that onto our first instrument track here and open this guy up. We'll set the key to be G sharp minor and hit go. Now we're gonna start plunking in our chord progressions. Captain Chords has a lot of really cool features and allows us to change the voicing and all sorts of stuff like that, but we're gonna try and minimize our input here and just roll with what the computer is giving us and then make a few changes using mostly just presets as much as we we can. So our first chord progression started off with a C sharp minor, then that goes into a D sharp minor. I'll just plug that in. Uh, the E major seven right there. And then we had an E. So we'll just add one more, set this to E and we're done. From here, we could change our inversions as we see fit. So maybe we'll change those a little bit and maybe change the complexity just to make these chords a little bit more spicy and interesting, but we're gonna use that exact progression. Captain Chords has a lot of really cool features outside of this. We can change our sound presets. There's a whole bunch of different sounds we can choose from. We can also load our own plugins into this plugin, so we can run Serum or whatever inside of this, or we can use VST output. We can also just use the MIDI, so we can just drag the MIDI into our DAW, but I think we'll deal with the instrumentation and stuff here in a minute. I just wanna get the parts going. Okay, so I've got all our chords plunked in here. We've got our verse. I changed the voicings and the complexity and stuff a little bit just to find something that maybe sounded a bit more liquid drum and bassy. Then I plugged in our chorus and our drop chords here. We might tweak those a bit more later, but for now, I think I'm happy. We've got all our parts done. Let's move on to adding some bass to this. The Captain plugins are actually really cool for this, so we can close this out and actually just grab a Captain Deep and add that here. And this will connect to our Captain chords, so we don't have to input that information again. We can just hit connect. And there we go, here's our baseline. There's a bunch of presets for this as well. Does plugins, does VST output, all that kind of stuff, same as Captain Chords. But we can just follow the chords. We can do opposite movement, some minimum adjustment stuff, don't change the melody. We can change the rhythm and some other stuff like that. So I think we're gonna start tweaking this a little bit until we find something that we're happy with. Okay, so I've got everything set up now. I've got Captain Chords with our chord set up and I got the bass going now. So this is follow the chords with the action rhythm and just the standard Ollie bass preset. If we give this a play now, I think that has that, you know, kind of nice rolling liquid chill drum and bass feel. So let's move on and maybe start adding some melody next. Okay, so I figured every drum and bass song needs an ARP. So I created an ARP sound in Dune here. This is just kind of a sample and holdy thing. So the sample and hold is targeting the wavetable position and the filter cutoff. There's not really much else going on here. It's just a pretty standard sound. <laughs> To make it a bit more interesting though, I use Stokus here and I've got just kind of a standard ARP pattern going on with just some probability things. So it's gonna just change every so often. But that gives us a nice chill kind of plucky ARP to sit underneath everything.
Moving right along to melody here, I got melody sauce up, I set this to G sharp minor and just clicked the dark simple five times and generated five different melodies. I picked three that I thought sounded the best and would probably suit the track because some of them were a little more pop sounding. One of them was maybe a little trappy. So I picked three that sounded the best to me. The sound is Dune 3 here. This is a really, really simple patch. This is another sample and holdy thing. There's two sample and hold LFOs. One is at eighth notes. One is at quarter notes. LFO 1 is going to the ring mod volume as well as the FX1 distortion drive. The distortion is actually a rate crusher. So it's kind of a cool sample and holdy bit crushy thingy. There's a delay and a little bit of reverb. LFO2 is going to oscillator 3's volume, and that's really all there is to it. So with all that done, I think we're now ready to maybe start arranging out some of the parts. So we'll go into Captain Chords and Captain Deep and start dragging in these MIDI clips just to set things up, and then maybe we'll choose some different instruments for them a bit later. Okay, I've got an arrangement I think I'm pretty happy with. I used our verse progression here for the first four parts. The verse one then kind of drops out here for maybe a build up or something. The chorus goes around four times. That's going to be kind of our A drop. Uh, drop one comes in here, so I use the third progression as kind of the middle section bridge thing. And then we've got the drop going around one more time here. So four times actually. And then the verse here is gonna kind of act as the outro. The ARP is probably gonna run the whole time maybe. I might just automate that on or off because AI can't really do that and AI can't really arrange, at least not the tools I have here today. But this is sounding pretty good so far. So let's start bringing in some drums. The only thing I've done other than that is just bus all of the instruments together because we're gonna have to side chain. So I figured I'd just make my life a bit easier there. For the drums here today, I think we're gonna use Captain Beat, which is part of the Captain plugin suite. So we'll drag this guy in here. This is a drum rhythm preset bank, essentially. It's not really an AI drum tool, but I figured maybe we can also pull out the drum map in the reason rack to generate some of the percussion patterns or something just so we have a bit more computer influence rather than just working solely from some preset rhythms. Captain Beat works in the same way as the other Captain plugins. We get our different sections here so we can set up our drums for each section, but this plugin is particularly cool and I'll show you that stuff here in just a moment. So we need to select our pattern and some fills as well as the drum kit. We can also drag in our own samples, so I think we'll just do that to pick some nice drum and bassy samples. So let's go into the patterns here and find something that's drum and bassy. So we've got electronic music, uh, down tempo house, um, Polaris D and B, perfect. Let's grab uh, uh, maybe some jungle or some half step. No, let's do maybe minimal. Let's try. Let's try one of these really quick. So let's go to just kind of the main section. We'll just audition a few. Okay, so that one, cool. So we've got our drum set up now. So to replace these samples, let's go in here. We'll go to my dogs on acid packs and grab just some kicks and stuff and just replace these drums with ones that we see a bit more fitting. So all we need to do is find a kick. I don't know, maybe that one and we'll drag this onto that track or just up here and that replaces that with our own sample, which is pretty cool. Okay, I've got all the samples replaced here. So the drums now sound more like this, which I think is sounding pretty good. Maybe we'll go in here and adjust these effects a bit. Other than that, I think I'm happy with them. Let's maybe, there we go. Drop the decay of that tom. Other than that, I think things are sounding nice and tight here and punchy like we want for some D&B drums. Now, what I think is really neat about this plugin is the ability to export. We actually get a couple of different options here, which is really, really cool. I actually haven't seen something like this before in one of these plugins, but we can actually export not only the master audio or the master MIDI, which is really nice, but we can also export the channel MIDI or the channel audio, meaning we can set up our drums in here and then export the stems and mix them individually, which is super awesome. Just like the other plugins, all we need to do is just grab this and drag it into our DAW. So we'll do this for each of these channels and then start doing a couple other drum patterns and maybe some fills here and there. That way we can start getting the drums going for this song. But wait, I just discovered something really cool that I didn't notice at first. So in the master audio right now, this is the full bus. But if we mute something, you'll see it takes out the kick here. So we can actually stem this out a lot faster. So if I solo out, let's say my snare and my clap here, which are put together, I can export the master of those two elements soloed and we'll do the same with the hats and percussion here, just like so. And now we've got all our percussion bust together as one stem. 
and then the same with the toms which is a actually really really nice thing because now we've got our drums as four tracks which is a lot more manageable i think we've got our drum patterns almost ready here i've got two of them going and i wanted to get one more but i'm not totally sure of this rhythm here so i think what we'll do is go into the basic here and change only the snare and clap rhythm which we can do so we'll go in here and start changing this by changing the snare rhythm we'll change that here as well Cool, and now we can just start dragging that in and then we'll arrange our drums out. All right, everything is arranged and we are ready to get started with the mixing process. I added a couple of different instruments here just for the sake of the vibe because the AI can't really make creative decisions like that as to like the instrumentation and stuff. I will quickly walk you through that. So the chords here, I've changed to a couple of different instruments. I've got a piano down here. This is just a rapid preset called the Cinema Piano. Then we've got a couple of pads and stuff. Uh, the main keys here are another rapid preset. This is Fantasy Sweep. I've got some plucks here to fill out the drop thing. This first one is air bounce inside of rapid. The second pluck layer below that is Carabic pluck two. Sounds like this. Then we've got a nice pad here. This guy is ambient pad two. And finally, I added a bass. That's really it. The bass I just made myself inside of rapid. This is just a standard uh, three voice Reese bass because it's drum and bass and that's the bass that you use a little bit of tube distortion and a low pass that guy sounds like this the only other notable changes I made for the arrangement are the arp here I've turned this on and off in a few sections just to arrange this track a bit more I added some transitions and impacts here just for the sake of composition it just made more sense with those so that was a human decision but you know, that's what it is. And then finally, I added in some breaks here. This is because it's liquid DNB and you need breaks to make it DNB. So that was a human decision. But I used breaks that followed the drum patterns as closely as possible. So it's sort of the same thing, just a bit of a creative flair. Now, we're ready to get on with the mixing process. To begin, I added a isotope relay to every single track in this mix. Relay allows everything to communicate and allows the mix assistant to do its job because on the master bus, I've got the visual mixer here, which is part of Neutron 3. What the visual mixer is going to allow us to do is set the initial levels for everything and kind of get the ball rolling. Now, this is a good time to note that obviously the AI can't make creative decisions for the mix like filter sweeps or adding a reverb or things like that, at least not yet, maybe one day. But this is going to allow us to set our levels. Then we're going to go through on each track and add an instance of Neutron and let the AI mix that specific track for what it is. Then we will master everything using Ozone and we'll be done. This is pretty easy to do. All we need to do is go into our mix assistant here and there's a walkthrough, but we don't need that. So we're gonna hit begin. Now we need to select our focus tracks or the elements we kind of want to highlight. So this is where we have to make a decision. The computer can't really do this for us because you have to select at least one thing for this to work. Now we say begin listening. Now what we do is play our song from the beginning to the end, and we will come back, I guess, after we go make some coffee or something. All right, now that we're topped off, we're back, and Neutron has done everything for me, which is actually kind of awesome. So we need to listen back now and make any adjustments. And we can also edit the classifications here. So Neutron tries to do the best job it can in identifying what each thing is. So we can see here that it correctly identified the drums as percussive elements. The keys it identified as a bass. So we might need to go in there and change that to musical and just make some other adjustments where maybe it got things wrong. Let's double check everything else. The brakes are a percussion. The pad is actually a musical element. The pluck came out as a bass. So I guess that's musical. Um, snare came out as focus. Toms are percussion. Tops are focus. It looks like everything else is correct. Now that we've got all that corrected here, let's go to, I guess, kind of like the main section of the song here, maybe the second drop where everything's going and just make any adjustments we need to. <laughs> I 
I'm not sure I totally agree with that balance, but maybe we'll give this another chance after we've added Neutron to everything because this sounds a little wacky at the moment. So maybe with Neutron on each track that will turn out better, but we will see. After a quick double check, I think I identified the problem. It was mostly that the bass was in the focus, so that seemed to throw everything off. But now I just made a couple quick tweaks to the grouping of things here. <laughs> Things seem to be sitting in a better place, but let's move on and start allowing Neutron to mix the individual elements. So Visual Mixer is done. We could further use this, but I think for now we're just going to leave that be because the rest of that is going to be subjective, human-y, creative decisions. So let's close this out and start using Neutron to mix the individual elements. I suppose let's start off with the keys. So I'll just show how this works really quickly, and then I will run through the rest of these and we can take a listen to the mix. So we'll call up a Neutron here. We just want the full Neutron. Then we could select a preset, but in this case, we want to utilize the Mix Assistant. So let's solo this out and we'll hit Mix Assistant here. And we're going to hit Track Enhance. We could also use Balance, but we've already done that with the Visual Mixer. So we'll go to Track Enhance and hit Next. We will select the instrument here. I guess we'll help it out and tell it that this is Keys. Uh, I guess I would classify this as Electric Piano. We can set the style, maybe warm and the intensity. I guess we'll just leave on medium and see what it spits out. So for reference right now, it sounds like this. Now we will hit next and we will play back the audio. So we'll just let it know what it's mixing. And as you can see, it's gonna listen and analyze everything. All right, cool. And this is the suggestion to help us get started. So it added a sculptor, which is kind of a balancing tool, an EQ. It looks like it wanted some highs uh, and cut some low end. And looks like these are maybe dynamic bands, I think. Yep. Okay, it added an exciter. Uh, it wanted some tube up top and some tape. And then we've got a compressor here, a pretty subtle compressor. So before and after. So it definitely sounds warmer. And now we're going to repeat this same process for every other element in this mix, which is obviously going to take a while. So we're going to use some Hollywood magic. Hey, beautiful. Long time no see. So we are done. That took just shy of 10 minutes, which is really impressive. That was really easy. Uh, as you saw, really, I just had to tell it what it was listening to, and then it would just do everything else for me. In a couple of cases, I just let it run automatically just out of curiosity to see what it did. And this is the mix here at the moment. Let's take a listen, I guess, through some of this middle section and some of the second drop. <laughs> So that is where we're at at the moment. The only thing I added in was the side chain here because it can't do that and make that decision for you. So I just added in some side chain. Now I do want to run this through one more time because I feel like maybe the visual mixer will do a better job now that everything's kind of mixed as it will be because I feel like maybe it was interpreting things before they were finalized, which probably has some kind of impact on the AI's way of interpreting things. So I'm going to run this through Mix Assistant one more time from the start, and that way it can remix everything based on what will be the final sound because we're not going to tweak any of the mixing settings whatsoever. Now that we've got this done, I want to go ahead and change our focus here because last time it seems like that was hard on the AI to have so many things to focus on, which does make sense. Obviously when you're mixing, you can't have everything be important because then nothing is. So let's just pick our main kind of standout thing, which I suppose is just gonna be our melody and our ARP and then the kick and snare. I think those are if I had to pick like the absolute most important things, that's probably it. So we'll do the melody, we'll grab the kick, and then we'll grab that arp, 
and let this run one more time and then we will master with ozone and check out the completed result. All right, and we're back. Everything has been reanalyzed and then I just double checked the classifications for everything. Let's take another listen here and see where we're at. I think that's not bad. The side chains may be a bit intense now, but I think now the assistant did a much better job in understanding what it was doing. Some of the stuff I would mix it a bit differently, but I think we're just gonna leave it for now and see what we get. So we will hit accept and there we go. Okay, so we've got ozone open and now we need to tell it what we're going for. Are we going for modern or vintage? I'm gonna say modern. Loudness and EQ, uh, manual or reference with medium. Okay, we'll leave it on manual with medium intensity just to leave it in the middle of the road. And destination, streaming or CD. So this sets the maximizer ceiling to minus 0.3 for lossless and minus 1 dB. Okay, cool. Uh, let's just go. For the best results, play the loudest portion of your track. Sick, let's do it. All right, let's let this do its magic. And with that, we are done. That took all of like 30 seconds to master a track, so that's pretty killer. Let's take a quick listen to the final result. Not bad, that sounds very passable. That sounds nice and even it doesn't sound really brick walled or anything. And with that, we have had our computer mix master write a song for us. That's pretty dope. Let's take a listen to the final product. There we have it. That concludes today's experiment. And I'm not mad at the results. What what do you think of the final outcome? Let me know in the comments. I think it did a pretty good job. I would have changed some stuff. Um, I don't really like the percussion being so quiet. And, you know, there's some balance things that I would change. And I guess part of that is personal preference. And then part of that is just the human element of like the vibe of the track and what gives it that vibe and kind of those little subjective things as well as just as a human i know that this is drum and bass and i assume neutron and ozone don't know that so you know the way a mix engineer will approach rock as versus drum and bass as versus jazz as versus dubstep or something very, very different approaches for each of these things, and with each of those genres comes some kind of tropes and things that are common to it that we as a mix engineer and as a mastering engineer would address in order to make it sound like what it is. With all that said, 
I think the result is pretty impressive. That sounds really good. It's not perfect and it's not meant to be. As I said earlier in the video, all of this is meant to be a starting point. We are then to interpret this in our own way and apply adjustments as we see fit. And obviously there are some creative decisions to be made with like the fade out and the transitions and other effects, you know, do we add a delay? Does this need reverb? Should I bit crush this? And you know, those questions that AI just can't answer at the moment. All things considered though, that was an awesome experience to be able to write, mix and master a song in a matter of like 20 minutes, probably under 20 minutes, really. And I didn't even have to do anything. I mean, I didn't even have to like write the song. I just had to like do some basic arrangement stuff, pick the sounds and add some basic tweaks with little ear candy things and everything else was just done for me. And so I think that concludes today's video and today's experiment. I think that was a lot of fun. That was really cool. And I'm glad I was able to finally make this video happen. Like I said, it's something I've wanted to try for a long time and that was pretty cool. Big shout out again to Isotope, EvaBeat and Captain Chords for hooking me up with these awesome plugins that made this video possible. I think this was super fun and I'm definitely looking forward to trying this again. And I'm really looking forward to seeing where technology like this goes in the future because I feel like it's only gonna get better from here and it's gonna get really impressive really quickly. And I think that concludes our time here today, friends. So thank you for watching. If you run a similar experiment and have access to these plugins or plugins that are similar, let me know how that turns out. I'd love to check that out. I think maybe in the future we could do a video where I mix and master this song myself and compare and contrast the results. That might be kind of interesting. But yeah, that was really cool. That was a lot of fun. So thank you for watching. I hope you learned something. Be sure to like and subscribe, and I will see you guys again soon.